Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. I've been a CPA for 28 years. Today, I want to teach you how to use the unposited funds account in QuickBooks Online. Before we get into how to do it, let's talk about why we're doing it. This undeposited funds account in QuickBooks Online is awesome. I really haven't seen it in any of their competitors, and it's extremely useful. So let's talk about why. So the undeposited funds account, it lets you bundle cash and paper checks together into a single bank. So we don't use undeposited funds for anything electronic, credit card transactions, automatic bank transfers, nothing like that. It's only for the physical payments that we take to the bank, right? So it's cash and it's checks, and it allows us to bundle these together. Well, why do we want to bundle those multiple payments together? Because that's how it's going to show up on our bank statement, right? If you take a pile of checks to your bank, you fill out a deposit slip, you give it to the bank, your bank statement just shows one lump sum. Well, when you go to reconcile your checking register in QuickBooks Online to your bank statement at the end of the month, you need to have a one-to-one -one match there. You don't want 30 checks showing in your check register and just the lump sum amount showing in your bank statement, right? That would be incredibly hard to reconcile. So what this does, it makes the reconciliation easy by allowing you to lump cash and physical checks together into a single deposit, which then matches perfectly your bank statement. So that's why we want to use our undeposited funds account. Okay. So how do we do it? It's actually fairly straightforward. Um, as you receive cash and checks, you don't want to show them being deposited to a checking account. You want to show them being deposited to the undeposited funds account. When you do that, it basically sets it aside into account into an account that waits for you to make a bank deposit. So at the end of the day, at the end of the week, hopefully no longer than the end of the week, you're gonna take all of this cash and paper checks, you're gonna take it to the bank. So when you do that, you're gonna create a bank deposit in QuickBooks Online. You can easily select exactly which check uh, and payments you wanna include in that deposit and make the deposit, very slick. So let's get into showing you exactly what that looks like in QuickBooks Online. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually record the receipt of some payments. So let's do that. So uh, let's go over here to our sales and let's look at what open invoices we have and let's just clients have finally paid us. So let's go down. Oh, maybe Aaron Dave owes us $350. So let's receive that payment Okay, so we're going to assume they paid us today. They paid us with a check number or whatever, 5498. And here is the key. We're going to deposit this check into the undeposited funds account. So notice we could deposit it directly into a checking account if we wanted to, but we don't want to do that because if we do that, it's going to show up on the check register in QuickBooks Online as a single amount. And that's not how it's going to show on the bank statement. The bank statement is going to show it grouped together with all the other checks for that day. Okay, so we're going to make it to the undeposited funds account, $350. Uh, let's save and close. Okay, and let's do another one. Uh, let's look here. We'll do, we'll do this one. Castillo. Let's just uh, hit receive payment. Again, let's assume it was a check. Put in the check number. And again, we're making it to undeposited funds for $150. Save and close. So that's two checks now that we want to be able to group together into a lump sum. Okay. And let's do one more. Instead of it receiving a payment on an invoice, let's uh, say somebody came in and bought something in cash. So we're just going to issue them a sales receipt. So somebody, Brian Cook, came in and paid us cash. And Let's just put some information in here. So it was uh, today. And it paid for some AC repair. And we'll just say like $80. 
Okay. So we're receiving $80 again into undeposited funds. So this is cash, putting it with our checks. We're going to deposit it into our bank account. Okay. So let's hit save and close. Okay. So now it's the end of the day. We have three things sitting in our envelope waiting to be taken to the bank. So let's take them to the bank now. The way we do that is we're going to go to new. And we're going to go over here to bank to And look here, here are the three items we have sitting in our envelope waiting to be deposited in the bank. It's the check from Castillo, the check from Davies, and the cash from Cook. So our total bank deposit is going to be $586. We're going to deposit that. That's going to show that lump sum will show in our check register, and that'll match perfectly with our bank statement, making it very easy to reconcile our account. Now, other things in this bank deposit screen. Um, if there are other items we're depositing that haven't already been entered into our counting system, we can actually enter them here. Generally, you don't want to do this. So especially if it's from a customer, if it's income of some sort, it needs to go through your normal process. So it needs to be, you know, if they just bring it in and if they just come in and buy something, it needs to be a sales receipt. Um, if you've invoiced them and they pay it, then it needs to go through that process, issuing an invoice, receiving uh, the payment. So um, very rarely would you use this. One instance, perhaps you would use this might be, uh, I don't know, let's say your your owner gives an owner's contribution um, to the company, something like that. So this works very much just like all the other forms here. You can choose the account um, that you want to uh, debit or credit. So, you know, if it was construction income, again, if it's income, you really shouldn't run it through here. Um, but let's say if it was an owner's contribution, here we have partner contribution. So we're set up as a partnership. So you could put a partner contribution in here and then make it, uh, with the deposit of all the, uh, other checks from the customers. But again, generally you don't want to use that, but that's there if you need. Okay. So we have our three deposits. Let's just hit save and close or our one deposit, our three items that are being included in the one deposit. And there we go. We've made our, okay. So let's see what that looks like now in our, uh, check register. So let's go to transactions and then down here to our chart of accounts. And then we made that deposit to our Bank of America checking account. So let's view that register. And here we can see the deposit we just made of $586. Okay, good. Well, if we want to see exactly what was in that $586, we're going to have to click on the transaction and then hit edit. And here it shows us the three items. If we, if we made a mistake and let's say, oh, you know what? We didn't actually include that cash in the deposit. We can simply uncheck it and that will take it out of the deposit. Okay. Up here is where we indicate which checking account. So if you have multiple checking accounts, you're going to want to make sure that you choose the, the correct one here. So we made it to the bank of America. Now we've unchecked this Brian cook. Let's hit save and close. And the new amount should only be $500. Okay, good. So now we have a $500. But well, what happened to that $86 in cash? Well, because we've taken it out of the deposit, it's now sitting back in undeposited funds. So we can always view what's in undeposited funds by making bank deposit. And there we go. So when we took the Brian Cook cash out of the deposit, it moved it back to the undeposited fund. Okay, if you want to remove something then from undeposited funds, we're going to have to go back to the underlying transaction. So you can't delete anything here from undeposited funds. We'd have to go back to the sales receipt for Brian Cook, and we'd have to show it being deposited to our petty cash account rather than to our undeposited funds. Then that would remove it from this bank. Excellent. So there you go. That's how you use the undeposited funds account in QuickBook Online. It is an incredibly handy tool that none of the competitors have, makes your bank reconciliation incredibly easy. 
Uh, we talked about a lot of different things in this tutorial that I've assumed you know how to do, receive payments on invoices, issue sales receipts, uh, things like that. If you're still learning about QuickBooks Online, we have some fantastic resources for you. Go to fitsmallbusiness.com backslash free QuickBooks Online tutorials. We have 55 free tutorials. Uh, they're all in writing with annotated screenshots. If that's the way you prefer to learn, uh, all real fantastic uh, tutorials. We also have these videos attached to those tutorials as well as being available in QuickBooks as sorry, as well as being available in YouTube. So please like our channel in YouTube, visit all of our QuickBooks online uh, material we have for you. Again, my name was Tim Yoder. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you again in our next QuickBooks online tutorial.